activity. And would you agree, not only is it in activity, necessarily it's seeking a goal, it's seeking, right, makes plans, directions, right, commands itself, it's in time. It functions in time. But that part of the soul that we talked about that separates from the soul from the body in that experience we described, that's real, immortal, and it knows simultaneously the whole, watch now, Anything that you can know simultaneously as a whole, all at once, is, a, is the word for eternity or eternal. Therefore, there's a part of the soul. See, part of the soul, therefore, is two parts. One is immortal. Therefore, it must have some kind of thing called being. It, it, it must be real, eternal, and immortal. And the way in which you can talk about that word being is this curious word, see in Greek, right? Which is that thing which is capable in us to turn around and know itself. That takes on the word in English, essence. Sometimes they translate it as being. So therefore there's a part of the soul which has an essence, that part which can turn around and know itself, there's a part which is mortal in its activity, therefore the soul has an essence and an activity. Essence is in eternity or eternal, and its activity is in time. Wow, well, look here. We can then do this. We can say, isn't that curious? Because uh, being itself, that luminous reality, that luminous radiant, right, of what is ultimately real, right, that exists, the essence of that, right, the essence of that is eternal. And since it is, it is a dynamic, its activity, right, its being is eternal, and its activity is eternal, both. <laughs> so therefore, its essence is eternal, and its activity is eternal. Therefore, soul, its essence is eternal, its activity is in time. Now, you know what? There are other kinds of things, like this chalk, Right? Uh, all of its parts are subject to change. Nothing survives. Therefore, its essence is in time. And its activity, or what you do with it, is in time. So you see, that's a, that's a mean proportion. Both are in time. Both are eternal. The soul, therefore, has one part. And like these other things, one part that's in time. Therefore, it's a mean proportional. Yeah, I guess what I, what, what I, as you were doing that, I was thinking that the only part, the only part of man that is real mm -hmm. is that part which is, it has the same characteristics as the one. And, and or, or being, right? Or being. Yeah, right, right. Then, uh, that's why I question mm -hmm. the existence of, of man, oh, yeah. because the only, right. the only right. part that's of right. man that that's real is the uh, is the one. So oh, if I say mm -hmm. that if I if I give if mm -hmm. I posit the existence of me and mm -hmm. all I'm, I'm actually I'm actually positing is the existence of mm -hmm. the one yeah. and that men are is a, is a, the men and women they are only myth. The, the man and woman is just a myth that yeah. Uh, yeah. That's being passed along, or yeah. that is coming to existence. Yeah, that's right. You're saying, are you not? And, uh, that there is something common to us all, right? And that's what's real. 
Well, and to the degree that we can participate in that real but even when you say, or one. When we say no. us, then we're assuming we're assuming that the the thing that prov that makes a multiplicity mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. real, and and it seems as though the mm -hmm. multiplicity mm -hmm. is not is not real either. So That's the right. concept of us is Must drop. Is dropped. That's right. Totally agree. That's right. See, what you just moved from is is the idea of individual souls to the idea of soul to the idea of what is real as reality right? and then you saw immediately that that has to have to now consider something higher than that since that's a unity right and therefore there must be a one above it all and that is what really is that's right that's right that's right, that's right. you've gone through these categories now uh, if we had more time, the question, the fun thing to explore and to put into words and see whether you can make sense of it, is how there can be individual souls. Can you talk about a collective? How does that relate to world soul? Are they parts of it? Do they share in it? Do they participate in it? Uh, that's a one-many problem. Then. On the level of reality, if each of these souls is capable of experiencing the nature of this reality, then good heavens, if that's true, then uh, if they experience the same thing and recognize in that experience it discloses something about themselves, that is, they know themselves, then they know the same thing <laughs> about them all. Yeah, that's right. I know it's, the time is late, but what I'd like to be able to do is, uh, is to establish the existence of individual souls. I don't, yeah. have, I don't have the tools to, to, um, to okay. lead myself through that, yeah. that uh, proof. Yes, and we should take some time out and do it. But see, the part that you're talking about is very important because that's the return. See, after that vision, why aren't we totally different? Why aren't we totally changed? Why don't we tell people that that was me yesterday, I'm no longer me yesterday, I'm totally different. We can, there's still something about us that we still recognize that has some kind of continuous identity. That's the problem of individual soul. And I hope, that's the one many problem. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you very much.